Hey everybody, I just want to shoot a little video of my brackish tank tonight. I'm not really sure what the goal of this video is going to be. I've tried three or four times now. I keep wandering off in different directions, so I don't really know exactly what I want to talk about about this tank. But I do want to focus on it some more. I do want to talk more about my brackish tank. Um, I just want to encourage people to do them. I get a lot of questions about it whenever I post videos. Um, last time I didn't make it very clear how big the tank was. Um, I didn't give a very good sense of scale. So this is a 20 gallon long. And the larger fish in there, my uh, female swordtail, pineapple swordtail right there. She is about 4 inches total length. Uh, but her bat, fat belly is what makes her the largest fish. My Madagascan rainbow here, the male, is slightly longer than her, but does not nearly have the mass. So he's not the largest fish in the tank. So I also have a variety of other live bearers in here. I have some bumblebee gobies on the bottom. And I also have a figure eight puffer on the bottom in here. Uh, sorry about the glare on this tank. I mean, it's really difficult not to get it because of the way I have it lit. Uh, the light bleeds over, as you can see the light on the wall. Uh, well, the same amount of light is shining in front of the tank, so if I get in front of the bit too close, you see me reflecting in the tank, and if I get the camera too close, you get the lens flare. Um, so this is a difficult tank to film. But at any rate, um, the other thing I want to talk about is brackish water and what brackish water actually is. There seems to be a little bit of a uh, misunderstanding about that sometimes, too. Um, I live near the Chesapeake Bay, and I've just kind of grown up around brackish water and brackish uh, environments. So I sort of take for granted that people understand how all that works. A brackish environment is an environment somewhere between freshwater and saltwater. If you think about a bay or a harbor uh, where a river uh, flows into the ocean, uh, you get that mixture of fresh and saltwater. So you get this kind of in-between, sort of dilute saltwater. Now the important part of brackish water is that it has dissolved salts in it. Uh, very hard water has dissolved minerals in it. And I will do a video later talking about the differences between dissolved salts and dissolved minerals and electrolytes and how that affects the physiology of the animals involved. Um, but I want to start uh, getting our toes wet in that area by talking about the types of animals that are called brackish animals typically. Um, there is no such thing as a brackish fish. There is a brackish environment, and then there are animals that can live in that brackish environment. And those animals are called urihaline animals. Um, urihaline means that they are able to um, basically regulate, osmoregulate within their body and, and maintain a specific gravity within their um, cells regardless of the specific gravity of the environment they're in. Um, a stenohaline fish, which would be, say, your average fish that would be in your typical freshwater tank, these rasporas, mygobies, um, etc., their specific gravity inside their cells is dependent on the environment they're in. So if you put them into brackish water, the amount of salts that are in the water would then become the amount of salts within the cells of the animals and that would not be a tenable situation, they would die. Um, these urihaline animals have the ability to regulate that so if you shifted them anywhere from salt water all the way to fresh water they can adjust for the changing environment. Now the caveat to that is that they have, I'll call it a sweet spot, they have an environment or a specific gravity of water that is comfortable for their body to be in. And that's where they really should be to live a long, healthy life. And typically that is a brackish environment. They need those salts in the water. Um, if you can't provide them with a brackish environment, it's still better to put them in a very hard water environment. Uh, again, it's not the same. I'll get into that later because you do need these electrolytes in the water. Um, but the very hard water um, is better than nothing when it comes to having dissolved solids in your water. And again, I'm going to get into uh, total dissolved solids and what all that's about uh, very soon here as well. So with these animals, the figure eight puffer in particular, uh, I see a lot of people keeping that animal in fresh water, the gobies as well, um, and then the molly. And I want to talk specifically about the molly in a moment. But the, the figure eight puffer is absolutely 
I will use the term brackish fish. It is a urihaline animal that really does need to be in brackish water to live a long, healthy life. Um, if you remember what I just said a moment ago about the way the animals can move from salt water all the way to fresh water, they can do that, but their kidneys and other aspects of their body um, are going through a lot of stress in order to maintain that properly. So while they can live in a freshwater environment, it's really, really taxing their physiology to do that. And the further you take them away from their sweet spot, um, the worse it is. Now, I've said before in other videos, it's always better to go up than down. And this is one of those situations where that holds true. For these animals, if you had to take them out of their own environment and put them in an environment that, that would be better for them, it would be better to go up to salt water than down to fresh water. Now, when we get into the animals that are the live bears in here, the rainbow fish and my platies and mollies, uh, they're a little different. They are urihaline animals, but I'm not sure the rainbow fish would do well going all the way up to salt water. I'm not sure about the platies either. Um, the molly can quite easily go into salt water. Uh, a lot of people, I laugh every time I go to a, a pet store and I see saltwater mollies and they're on sale for like $12 or something. Um, a saltwater molly is a molly. There is no such thing as a saltwater molly. It's a molly. Um, they have just put it in salt water and now they can call it a saltwater molly and slap a huge price tag on it. Um, mollies are urihaline fish as well. As far as I'm concerned, a molly is what again I will call a brackish fish. Um, they really do need, and I'm focusing right here on the silver molly because that is the only uh, molly I have in this tank. If you want your molly to get as big as a molly can get and to be as beautiful as a molly can be, then you need to keep your molly in brackish water. And it, it will just, it will be so much healthier than if you keep it in fresh water. Now, if you've ever done any research, and when I say research, I mean you can go on any generic uh, big chain pet stores, um, little how to care for your animals page and you look at mollies everybody tells you that mollies do better with a little bit of aquarium salt in the water um, that's because what they really need is brackish water they really should have marine salts in the water um, but most people are not going to do that so it's better than nothing to at least put some aquarium salts in it and that's why they always tell you that um, if, if you want your molly to shine you need to put it in brackish water they will do okay in fresh water, um, but they, they won't thrive the way they will in brackish water. Now when you get to things like the gobies and the um, puffer, they really need to be in brackish water. They will survive in fresh water for a few years, um, but that's really going to be about it. An animal that should live at least 15, maybe 20 years is going to live maybe five if you put it in fresh water. Um, the mollies are the other way around. Instead of living five or six, you might get three or four. Um, you know, they, they can do okay in the fresh water, but they're never really going to thrive. You're never really going to get the colors from them. Um, they, they just really need to be in brackish water. So I will get into why they need to be in brackish water in my next series of videos or my next video. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the total dissolved solids are, what they do in the water, how they affect the animal. Um, and specifically, I'm going to talk about the differences between uh, dissolved minerals and dissolved salts. And the key is salts are electrolytes, so the fish need these salts for their nervous system to function properly. So that is going to be the video for tonight. Gives you a little bit of a look at my tank. Give you a little bit of a discussion about what brackish water actually is. And I would certainly love to hear from you in the comment section. If there's anything I didn't make clear enough or you have any other questions, by all means, please ask. I'm certainly trying to encourage everybody to do a brackish tank or at least dip their toes in the brackish water occasionally. So I hope this helped. Thanks again for watching. Please like and please sub.